Greetings, everybody. I'm Mobius One. This is Scurby. Hey, guys. Scurby is the quality assurance lead for the SWG EMU project. And, uh, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of an interview. I don't expect it to be much longer than 90 minutes or so. We'll try and aim for, like, less than two hours. Um, but, I don't know, with the new announcement, we might go a little bit longer than that. We'll see. Um, but we're going to start off with just some, uh, some about you questions for Scurby. Get to know him a little bit better. So... Uh, Scurby, go ahead. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about uh, about who you are, where you're from, uh, what kind of stuff you do, or whatever you're into, whatever you're comfortable sharing with us. All right. Uh, I think a lot of you know who I am. Um, see me around. Uh, actually, know my name is uh, Doug Rush. I live in Dayton, Ohio, south of Dayton, in a little suburb called Kettering. Uh, I got a quiet, comfortable life. I work like a dog every day. I fix uh, stuff at restaurants, whether it be freezers or coolers or ice machines or whatever is broken, I fix it. Make a pretty good living doing always, it. Always fixing stuff. Always fixing something. I'm very curious, very honest, and I'm very self-motivated. I think that that lends itself perfectly to the quality assurance role. It makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, how were you introduced to Star Wars? Not not the oh, game in the particular. First movie. Yeah, the very first movie. I seen it live in the theaters. Cool. I'm old. <laughs> Just, uh, well, thirteen years old, maybe. Were you one of the ones that kept going back to see it repeatedly? No, I saw it once, and uh, yeah. All right. So um, and then saw the second movie also live in the theaters and after that i was uh figured out how to catch them on tv or video or vhs or betamax or whatever i had at the time cool um and still do it today gotta have the disney plus mandalorian fan okay it's a great story it's a great story i like it so that's my star wars cool uh, what about your first experience in Live SWG? I'm assuming that you played Live SWG. I did. I uh, played uh, quite extensively there for quite some time. Uh, I started maybe Pub 2, not at the very beginning, but um, their Pub 2, which was, I don't know, three months in, four months maybe when that started, and I started playing then. Uh, my brother signed me up because they him and his buddy were playing and they needed a medic of course so, that's why a lot of people started playing mmos hey you know and uh so i started off playing a medic and you know the pistols and medic and ended up working my way up to combat medic pistolier and we'd go out hunting do it quite often um how did you, so obviously you played Live Galaxies. Uh, I'm not going to ask you about your preferences as far as the versions go, but how did you find out about the emulator project? Um, well, it was after, um, you know, the different versions had changed and I couldn't take playing live anymore. Um, I basically did a Google search and found this project. Um, you know, it was probably over a period of a couple, three hours of looking around to see if I, I could find something. And back then, they didn't even have a live server. Uh, I think oh, wow. that was, yeah, I think that was 2008, maybe. Um, and just were sporadically getting it up and running, you know, zone in tests and that sort of thing. Cool. And then I kind of went away from it, came back when they both brought the new forums up and uh, found it again and actually made an account and I've been there ever since. So. Awesome. What about Galaxies uh, that sets it apart or what sets Galaxies apart from other MMOs uh, that you've played that um, keeps you coming back to it? Sheer volume of uh, the curiosity behind it. Uh, I mean, it is so well-defined and well-rounded more than any other game that I've ever tried as far as different things that you could do. Um, the complete sandbox, uh, 
you know, it was just wide open. And that's the part I enjoyed about it best. And, you know, on live, I ended up creating more and more and more accounts just so I could explore more and more and more of the game. Oh, period. boy. How many accounts did you have? What was your peak? Eight. Jeez. Eight. And six of them for almost two years. Wow. I Now, I was young when I played, so I was lucky my parents afforded me one subscription but i can't imagine if i was as old you know where i am today if galaxies had just come out how many accounts i would have had yeah i don't know if i'd have had eight though yeah that's a lot <laughs> um so i know you said you joined and so i got a bunch of pentium twos <laughs> with some cheap ass crt screens set up in the basement just to set up bots and yeah. That's awesome. Go um, down there and look back in after the server restart every morning. Yeah, I guess. Because with Basilisk having 10 characters, it's kind of like having 8 accounts. Sort of. Very similar. Um, now I know you said you joined to be a healer. Um, what do you actually enjoy doing in-game? Uh, when you play. I know you don't play it that much anymore. Uh, here's here's the thing that I really enjoy about the game is that what I like to do is to take one idea to its conclusion and I will go set about doing that and with 10 characters it's easy to do and so I'll take one character let's say I want to make the best server best bone armor which I have and I still own nice All right. I figure out the process to do that create the master artisan get all the experimentation tapes so i got 14 points you know um i go out and find the best components that i can uh what hunt whatever i gotta loot whatever i gotta you know and put all of it together and to end and then go do the next thing and work it all the way through from beginning to end set a goal for yourself yeah and work towards it and yeah Cool. Just get lost in that idea and make it the best you can be and have a blast doing it. Very cool. All right, so as far as actually being on staff, how long have you been on the SWG EMU staff? Let's see. It was, I think, February, January or February 2013. Okay. I actually um, became a staff member. Um, I was uh, hired as a QA on Nova. Um, this was a, right after a big exodus of all the QA. Um, and uh, Woos uh, was the uh, QA leader at that time. And uh, he hired four people. And uh, his intent and purpose at that time, which I didn't know, was to hire his replacement. Hmm. Sneaky. And, uh, and he, he, within about three months, he retired and put me in lead with another guy. We co leaded for a while, and then he just went MIA, and I've been there ever since. So. <laughs> it's like, uh, welcome. These problems are now yours. Yeah, pretty much. That's great. It but, was a challenge, uh, but, you know, I had some fun with it. So, have you been QA for the entire seven years then that you've been on staff? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, how now? Obviously, everybody who works for the project is volunteer. How often would you say that you actually work on stuff for the project? Um, it depends on what area I'm looking at. Um, I, I was, if you've read that post and talking about me being the eyes, I read everything, look at everything, talk to everybody. Um, I mean, I cover events. I cover uh, CSRs, I cover dev department, I cover QA, I cover Discord, Reddit. Uh, I pay attention to everything and make sure that we're staying in line everywhere we need to be. And so I spend probably 40 hours a week at that maybe, sometimes less. I try to curb it a little bit. Did uh, This this isn't in my notes, but I have to ask, did uh, Lord Cater coin the uh, the nickname the eye of sauron or is that has that been a thing he, he did i had to google it i had no idea what the fuck that was 
<laughs> I think I think I smell a new forum avatar in the near future. Really? I don't know. Well, if you're up for it, I don't know if you uh, if you uh, accept that new moniker or not. Um, yeah, well, it's fitting. You know, it, it is sort of what I do. I do pay attention to everybody, um, you know. And after being seven years in the same spot and have worked with just about everybody, and they know my standards are, you know, and I ask the same from everybody: be professional and do it because you want to. Not going to ask you for your time. You want to give it; it's yours to give. But be professional. Do the job. Don't make me have to check up on you. And but you know, I still do. Very good. Um, out of all of the stuff that you've contributed to the project, so bug fixes or whatever, what would you say is the most, uh, the proudest thing that you've contributed, or thing that you're most uh, proud of? In like, a word, public checklist. Publish checklists. Um, that was an idea, not mine, that was from Xavier, if anybody remembers her. Um, she had set up a scrum for the entire dev team, QA team, had assigned roles to everybody in the processes, and um, it was a great idea in practice for, you know, people you're paying to get shit done. Um, but it didn't work well for volunteers. And so what I did is I took her process and sort of reversed it, right? And let it work from the other way. Instead of dictating out, okay, this is what's gonna get done this week and you're on a deadline to get it done this week. Um, we just reversed the process. Hey, you can do whatever you want. We'll check it off the list of we got a shit over here. And if you come up with something we ain't got on the list, we'll add it. And we'll still check it off. And um, the basic simplicity of, of reversing her process and putting it into the published checklist so that we could track what we're doing better. Um, all of our merges have gotten better and better and better because of it. I mean, you know, the first, you know, pub two, pub three merges, those were a nightmare of days of downtime for bass um where our last publish was what six hours 12 hours maybe yeah they have they've been really fast yeah and the stability after that is you know pretty decent as well as you know whatever hot fixes we got you know we keep a window open there for hot fixes to in case we passed a bug along so um that's all i think has to do with the way we use the published checklists and, and Manus together. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I'd have to say I was proudest of. Cool. Um, has being on project staff changed your, uh, your attitude or your opinion towards the SWG community? No, not really. <laughs> no, uh, you, you've always thought they were toxic. I'm be, just kidding. Yeah, be, be quite specific. <laughs> I, I mean, I hate everybody, and I'm probably the biggest troll on the open channels out there. You have no idea. And I hate everybody equally. So <laughs> I, I, my feelings about them have not changed whatsoever. Um, just for to kind of take a sidestep here, I see people are asking questions in chat. We do have a couple other staff right. members in chat. So if you guys want to answer questions early, go for it. But um, if you do have a question for Scurby in particular, just save it. And at the end, if we got enough time, we'll get to that. We're looking at over here. Yeah, Lord Cater's uh, answering some VPN questions. I don't want to touch that just yet. We'll get there eventually. Okay. He's doing yeah, some, some damage mitigation. Yeah, I see. That's okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so working as QA, what uh, for those who don't know, what are the QA members responsible for? Uh, making sure the code is right, that it works right, that it does what it's expected. Um, it's that simple. Um, it's not some arbitrary standard we come up with. We came up with the standard that was already set by 14.1. So based on that evidence and what we can come up with, their job is to make sure it's done right. That's it. Okay. 
that includes research, testing, a lot of research, a lot of time spent looking at screenshots, just digging through old archives, but making sure it's right. That's it. So would you say you're also responsible for like the, as far as Basilisk is concerned, the version 14.1 compliance? Is that a QA thing as well? Uh, not so much so, um, because um, there are changes from 14.1 that have been allowed on Bass to um, keep control of the game. I mean, you know, the random spawn timers on the Acclay, for example, is not 14.1 compliant. But you know what? It's the way it is now. <laughs> Um, okay, what additional responsibilities do you have as lead QA? Um, my responsibility to that is to be directly involved with the devs in a way that the rest of the QA team is not. Um, to offer feedback and oversight to their process. Um, as a lead, it's one of three, and each one of those three leads is responsible for oversight of each other's departments as well. So I have to make sure that I can do Nipper's job in an emergency or do Lollander's job in an emergency because they are the other two leads right now. Wow. And they have some sort of idea of how I get things done and how to be able to handle stuff for me if it were an emergency. That makes sense. Oversight, communication, it's important. Yeah, definitely. Um, I believe most of the people watching the stream right now probably already know this, but in case anybody out there still doesn't, what is the process that a player would go through to su submit a bug report? Uh, SWGEMU.com. Um, it's the same as your forum account. Uh, username and password, log in there. I don't know no. if it was just me. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think your mic cut out right as you gave the URL. <laughs> Let's really? try that one more time. SWGEMU.com slash bug. All right. Is it bugs or bug report? Bugs. bugs. Yeah, Got it. Bug. <laughs> it did. <laughs> yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> Couldn't have been any better. It almost sounded like you were censored. All right. I'll put a link in the video description too, uh, just for, <laughs> for our redundancy. Um, yeah, okay, so they go to that site and there's a form, they have to register and then fill a form? No, nope. if they already have an account on the forums, they are already registered for the bug reporter in Mantis. It's the same user word and password. Uh, that our global registration, when you sign up on our forums, you also have a, an account in game and an account on Mantis uh, automatically. And it's the same passwords for all. Same username, same password. That's how you go to report a bug. Cool. Um, now, once a bug is reported, what sort of process is there for QA to try and fix that bug? Well, first figure out if it's just plain bullshit or if somebody just wants to play like this. I'm not uh, censoring him, I swear. It's just it's yeah, just the internet. There, You cut out a little bit again, but you're fine. Keep going. Uh First thing we have to do is to uh, censor it to find out if it's complete bullshit or if it's just somebody wanting the game change to affect their gameplay the way they want. That's the first thing we got to do is just say, hey, you don't get to ask for that here or you don't get to have that complaint here or that's a customer service complaint. You need to take that to support, uh, that sort of thing. That's the first thing that's done is screen it. So you try to re reproduce it, see if it's an actual thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, first thing we do is to research to find out if the bug is real, that if the behavior that the, of the complaint is actually what it is. And then we check to make sure if that is the desired behavior or intended behavior or not. And then once we de determine whether it's intended, the bug gets closed as working as intended. If we find out it's should be different, then it gets passed on to the dev team to take a look at at their convenience. Always. Always. Um, if somebody came to you interested in joining the QA team, what would you tell them? Um, 
You know what? Anybody can QA. Uh, being a part of this team isn't really important. Um, have enough right now for the work we need to do, but there is always Nova and open communications with the QA team of anything that needs worked on. And a lot of times it's more helpful for players to look at it instead of increasing the size of our team to be involved with the community and let them do it. Let them test. I mean, when we did Jedi testing on Nova before it hit Bass, we had tons of, um, right now we've got other issues going on on uh, Bass that we're looking at on Nova and we got community members out there testing things for us and giving us feedback. That is huge. That is part of the team. That is working with our team 100%. I mean, you are treated the same as we are treat ourselves on the inside when we're working on one of those things. And that is the best way just to get involved. Do it because you want to. That's it. Yeah, that's what everybody on staff is doing it voluntarily, doing it because they want to, out of passion and just love for the game. All right. Um, I'm looking at my notes and actually that is the last question i had before we get into the juicy stuff <laughs> uh which is 1.0 now i do want to i made this reminder i think three or four times during my lord cater interview but as a first time here um anything that we're talking about when it comes to version 1.0 of the project and you know new server what to expect and going forward uh this stuff is all subject to change so just because uh, I think the first thing that should be expected is that um, we're going to try our best to make this the same for everybody that wants to play. That is going to be a key issue. Make sure that everybody gets to play the game, no matter what it is they want to do. And that, you know, is involving a lot of the things that we've changed recently with our terms of service and VPN accounts and that sort of thing. And we're, we're going to make it a different place that everybody wants to be and not some place you can go to, um, just have your way. Okay. I mean, professionalism is really going to step up a step. Um, All right, so now about 1.0, what do you see as features that are missing? Like what hurdles are left to get to 1.0 from where we are now? Um, AI. Um, we basically need to flush out the rest of AI, write a few more screenplays to finish up uh, uh, last few things that uh, are left for the ground game and we're, we're ready to go, I think. Um, yeah, because the two things that I can think of just off the top of my head are the AI and the whole crackdown with the uh, inventory scanning and that sort of things, and yeah. the gambling, the uh, the machines and the hotels and stuff. Oh, the gambling, yeah. There was actually a working version of gambling at one point, but it was easy to cheat, so it's been disabled. I mean, that, that seems accurate to me, though. Right. Uh, I, don't know. I mean, it's probably not good to be in an MMO, but cheating right. and gambling kind of go hand in hand. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Well, you weren't actually cheating other players. You were only cheating the, the game. So, yeah, we sort of disabled that. It needs to be redone. But, yeah, gambling, crackdown, AI, and uh, that should that should put us real close to where we need to be. No, I, I know. Speaking of which, speaking go of ahead. which, um, so that sort of moves the project into a different direction. Um, up until this point, this has been an alpha phase development project. That being said, we're moving past that into the beta phase of this project. Starting with today's announcement, we're moving into the beta phase and processing down towards point one one point oh really quickly with focus cool yeah we can actually i think today's announcement goes pretty pretty hand in hand with these this line of questioning so we can kind of 
talk a little bit about that. And actually, if we want to, let's just talk about that now. Uh, in case anybody has not seen that, there is a new forum thread uh, with an announcement. I'm not going to read it. I'm probably going to end up making a whole separate video about it, to be honest. Um, I will post a link in chat for those who have not seen it. There will be a link in the video description on YouTube. And uh, like I said, stay tuned for a video coming probably in the next week or so about it. But yeah, go ahead and uh, just if you want to give us your uh, Cliff Notes version of what's going on. <laughs> Rule the galaxy. So beta, what does that mean really for the project? Uh, beta is, is um, 1.0 we know is not going to be 14.1, right? I mean, the whole idea was to be able to get to a certain point, release that openly as 1.0 as 1.0 and from there we were going to make changes to play the game still being able to make changes and add things to the game and so those things will start to happen that are not 14.1 compliant and those things are going to start happening very soon even on bass because bass is now our beta server mm -hmm large-scale testing when we have as many as four to five thousand accounts that log into bass in a month's time that will be our scale testing for our beta as we move forward um, we'll of course follow the same process of unstable to Nova to TC prime to bass so that we can test it along the ways, but there will be things that will be coming that are going to be needed to get us to 1.0 and some of the changes that we want effective then and see how they play out before we actually pull the trigger and go, oh shit, we shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. We can do that on bass and find out if we couldn't get away with it first and then set us up with the things we can do for 1.0 and how we're going to implement that. So that sort of beta testing was going to be going Now, on. does that mean, I might be reading a little bit too much into this, but does that mean that we might see some non-14.1 changes being made to Basilisk in anticipation for 1.0? Yes. It may very well mean exactly that. Okay. I like the yes. sound of that. That'll make things a little bit more interesting. I'm sure there'll be a couple complaints saying that that's not what was meant to happen, but uh, I'm excited for that. Well, I don't think anybody has really come up with a good idea how this was supposed to end and the new ones begin. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a transition. I, but I and the team that we got working on this, that we have thought about this, and these are things we know we need to do to be able to do this right. Otherwise, we're just, you know asking or shoot ourselves yeah in the exactly no, i mean we got to plan it out try it out and see if it works just like we have when we started using the published checklist plan it out try it out see if it works if it don't well let's fix it now before it's too late i'm going to ask you a question i asked lk in, in his interview um i because I, I think maybe now with this announcement the, the answer might be a little different is it possible the Basilisk might be left online post 1.0 to be used as the unstable test server. Oh, hell no. Okay. <laughs> so the answer is not changed. <laughs> oh, no. We're talking about, you know, 600 gig of game database that is just insane. Uh, no, we don't need to store that or keep it or anything um the basic code for that will always be available um you know but to save that database no i don't i don't see it happening so you do plan on preserving the basilisk server code in addition to whatever changes you end up making going forward after 1.0 is that do i understand that we, every time we have made a publish we have made a milestone in Garrett, and each and every publish code is there in its entirety. From oh, it is. Day. It's archived. 
All of it, yes. Okay, cool. I did not know that. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so yes, that will also be there. There's one. There's a a, a, a core three basilis repository right, right now on Garrett, if you so choose, and it is basically what we have on basilis right now. Oh, that's very neat. Okay. Yeah. But we've been doing that for years. <laughs> um, yeah. Going back to my notes here, uh, what can players do at right now to help push the project forward? What sort of testing and where do you guys as a team need players to hop in and, and actually test stuff? Um, you know, the AI we've got going on needs some help. Um, we've got a few people over there helping out with the testing and some of that. Um and trying to sort that out, um, that that's a big deal for us right now. Um, other than that, you know, it's fast. It's still a test server. Um, there's, it's kind of hard to fuck it up. It's pretty stable nowadays. But you know, my thought goes back to the old dev rant, uh, which says, "Hey, you know." You're going through the crate get graveyard on your swoop and opening your email while you got your orange hot pants on. Do dumb shit. Uh, do dumb shit and see what happens. I mean, I'm great at that. Yeah, <laughs> Ferelli's seen me do some dumb shit on my live streams in the past. I don't know if he's still if he's still watching. It's hard to be creative doing dumb shit when you know too much about the game, like our our team does when they've practiced and read so much code it's hard to even fathom the ideas of doing dumb shit like that but they're pretty fucking good at it then again people that have no idea what they're trying to find usually find some pretty stupid stuff <laughs> um so this i think was answered in the announcement today but it is a question that i had listed here is do you plan on sticking around post 1.0 as either a player or a staff member I think our post today on the forum says quite clearly that I will. Yeah. So, so to those that can't or haven't checked the post, um, it actually says going forward, the Scurby, which is you, Frelly, and Lord Cater will be the council of three uh, that are pretty much going to be spearheading the project forward. Is there anything you want to elaborate there, or is that pretty much it? <laughs> all right so lk just brought up a point in chat report people that are exploiting why why would you want to report somebody that is exploiting the game and taking advantage when they're making a getting advantage over you Ooh. would you do the same thing because they are um, you know it's not the right thing to do. Um, you know, complete anonymity, of course. Reporting somebody, you never know who done the report. Um, the thing is, is why would we want to let an exploit exploit go on? Um, anything like that, we want to stop it and fix it, so that the game is still the same for everybody. I mean, the idea is to have fun, not get over. We make sure everybody gets to play. I love reading some of these comments. <laughs> this ain't the pub. <laughs> hey, he's home. You can do whatever well, he wants. Yeah, I'm at my house. I can do as I please. Um, oh, that's yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Robot. There's there's a. <laughs> I'm moving forward. All right. Uh, what features? Feature or features are you personally looking forward to seeing implemented? This says on a non-14.1 compliant server, which I guess could mean Basilisk going forward. Are there any specific features that you are looking forward to? Um, completely redoing the veteran rewards. That's I haven't heard that one yet. Go on. I'd like to see the veteran rewards completely redone. Uh, instead of being the 14.1 version that we're using now, something that's more relevant to how the 
we're going to present the game. I think that's a big thing. Uh, changing vet rewards around, um, changing up the loot system. Um, I really dislike the amount of junk loot um, and the fact that there's so much of it, it's easier to delete it than to take it to the junk dealer. Uh, so that that's a, an issue for a sticking point for me. I'd really like to see loot cleaned up in a way that makes better sense um, and supports a long-term economy. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, supporting a long-term economy, um, maybe increasing decay on certain items, fixing decay on clothing so that when it does have zero, you, your tapes are bad. Uh, it don't. Speaking of decay. Yeah. Is there any anything in the game right now that might be preventing that that you might want to address? Talk about the ADKs. Oh, those. Uh, those exist? Oh, Wait. Those. Those ADKs, um, you know, here's the thing is I'm not going to decide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gather a whole bunch of different information about these things, uh, different ideas and suggestions. I, and I'm speaking specifically about the ADK. And so the idea is, first of all, fucking ADK. Out of here. I, I didn't say it. ADKs. All right. Second thought. Make it no trade. Now it's priceless. You get one, you keep one. That's it. I, I've been a huge supporter uh, of that choice uh, right there. Another process, another thought process is maybe put them, give them decay themselves. <laughs> I need mean, an ADK I, on I my ADK. ADK on a weapon, <laughs> and it's there. It's there until it's. The weapon decays at a way slower rate, but it still decays. You never get your ADK back. So it, that wouldn't be an ADK. It'd be an RDK, reduced decay kit. <laughs> All right. And once it expired, once it expired, then you would be eligible after a certain period of time to draw different uh, vet reward. Interesting. So you could actually re-up your reduced decay kit <laughs> after it had expired but you lose it once it's once you put it on an eye it's there forever you don't get it back ever uh you can never trade it ever you can't sell it, it becomes priceless i right. those ideas uh what about completely changing around the whole idea of the adk that um you can only put it on uh items of for your specific profession, all right? So just there's a million different ways we could go about approaching that. And my position is to listen to them all, create the consensus and make sure we do the right thing. I'm glad you brought that up because that's leading perfectly into my next question, which you may not have an answer to. Uh, when it comes to who's going to be making these decisions on what changes we can expect, do we have any idea yet how those choices are, or how those decisions are going to be made? Or is it too uh, early? I think I just gave you a good example. Um, you know, that's one item that we're talking about. Um, we've talked about shuttle times and uh, buffs and power-ups and you know, and changing those around to help balance things out. Um, uh, all those things will all come into play and it will never be one person's decision. I can guarantee you that. Um, the amount of community input on certain issues can be limited. Um, there are some things that we will make a decision on and that is the way it will be. Um, not to hurt anybody's feelings, but, um, you know, we're not here to just cater to every whim of anybody that wants to ask for a specific feature. I, th I think that's, I think that's good because I think a lot of people forget that a lot of the changes that came to live SWG were from the devs catering to those complaining on the forums and not necessarily those enjoying themselves in game. Oh, the salty tears. Yep. The loudest, the loudest voices are the are the unhappy ones. It's definitely true. Yeah, the vocal minority. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, 
Let me see. Is there anything else in that announcement? Because I don't, I haven't had time to put anything in this announcement into my notes. So let me just do a quick scan here to see if there's anything in here that I wanted to ask about. Um, I guess I guess we could take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the multi accounting and the VPNs because that was brought up in chat, and it is sort of a new feature for 1.0. Yes. Um, so I think. I don't know who's more involved with it. I think LK might be more involved with it than you are. Uh, but multi accounting, if... multi accounting has been an issue since Bass was incepted. I mean, uh, multi accounting was going on on the old Nova Liberator, um, but it was encouraged then. There were no rules or restrictions. It just get as many people on there, log on as many characters as you can, basically. Um, you know, that was functional for what we were doing back then because just didn't care. We were just fucking smashing code at you and seeing if it worked. Um, we're about done smashing code. Now we got to clean it up. We got to get a community together of players that don't have an unfair advantage of multi accounts. I mean, when we end up finding one person on one IP address with one computer that has. 27 fucking accounts what the fuck for <laughs> really what yeah i agree i what agree what are you doing i mean what's what's the purpose of that oh well the purpose is that is what farm credits the farm adks uh farming characters uh you skilling them up and selling them off what uh what the hell's the purpose of having more than one account all of the uh, above. So, yeah. Uh, I have one account. I've always had just one account. Um, it's the way it is. I, I do just fine with it. I mean, don't need I don't need any more. I don't know why anybody else thinks they do. Did I piss somebody off? What, uh, what I, they they're no they're care. talking about all kinds of stuff. I don't even know if they're still listening, but that's fine. I was listening. And I agree. They're still talking about ADKs. <laughs> oh, Lord. Farm resources to make a better weapons to farm those same mobs slightly faster. Exactly. It's all about min-maxing now. There was a, it was hard to min-max before we had uh, all this information about how the game actually worked yes, back then. Now that, we, now that we know all the code, it's, it's a totally different game, unfortunately, which is why I think LK said... Uh, a little while ago, the mystery. Yeah, there he is. Bring back some of that mystery with 1.0. Mystery, yes. And that 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 is very important. I mean, I, I stress that to our our staff when we're talking about the vision of 1.0 is that we have to maintain mystery. Um, and so with 1.0, they won't have a complete open set of code to go and see how it's done before you get there there will be no open path to just see how everything's go. I mean, dude, how are you going to get Jedi? How are you Is going that to get something Jedi? that's on the uh, table for changing? Oh, uh, well, it should change, don't you think? I, should it I be do. A set path? Should you I don't, have? I don't know if... you already have a set path to get there and already know what it is and jump in there and be the first Jedi because you already fucking know? Where's the mystery? I think the what would be great there will is if, be if somebody smarter than and myself... Those, and those will be the decisions that the community won't get a say in. Interesting. You'll get to give ideas, but you won't really get to say because that has to say closed. That's the only way a mystery works. If you give up the mystery, what the fuck? Serena, uh, Serena asks a good question. Is the code going to be off limits then? Um, in a fashion, yes. I mean, it'll be open for developers and bugging and uh, creating new content. Um, you know, we we'll hope to write some more screenplays, um, and that sort of thing. Cool. So we we'll hope to create more events that are automatic, that just um, 
you know, it's coming at a certain time every week or every month. Uh, this is coming, and it's all run by the the server. It's all part of Core Three, and all that'll be open. Be able to share with other people, but you know, the actual mystery of the game. There's a reason there's custom folder. Speaking of speaking to make use of it. Speaking of events, yes, uh, there's been a new addition to the to the staff roster in the form of an event coordinator, Sugar Lizard. Sugar Lizard, who I believe is in chat now. I think I saw her name pop up at some point. I did. She said, "Hey." Um. Yeah, that's one of the things that I think has been missing from Basilisk for a while now. Um. I know. I want to say, uh, Weedy used to do events. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Her and Nefer used to work together doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and I think some of the greatest footage that I've ever gotten on my channel is from some of those events where hun literally hundreds of players would come out and just, like, have huge PvP battles. Or, like, that PvE event at the, on Yavin, the Masasi Temple. Um, yeah. It would be great to see those come back. But I know Sugar's done a couple events already, with one coming up next weekend. Um, and you're quite involved with them as well, is that correct? Yeah, um, you know, Sugar actually had an application up with me for almost a year for an event coordinator. Um, Niffer was overwhelmed just with CSR. We had left, so we had no event team. Um, at the time, the QA wasn't doing anything because we were stalled uh, waiting on a publish. And so I says, hey, you know, Niff, I'm going to take it over here and see what I can do with it. Um, got the QA guys involved with it. They set up a couple of events, uh, got creative with it, gave them some ideas and got creative. Uh, we started making documents and getting things together. Um, then LK started pressing me about Sugar Lizard, how I'd left it hanging for so long. And, um, you know, she's really involved with the community on the server. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'll run her through the ropes. And she's done an amazing, amazing job of just creating some situations in game for players where they said, heck yeah, they were immersed, they had fun. Um, if it was for an hour or two, they enjoyed it. And that that's a big thing. I really, uh, yeah. Yeah. I came out to at least one, maybe two of her events that she's had already, and I, they were really fun as well. Um, and there is one, for those that are watching this live, uh, there is one coming up next weekend, like I said, a Winter Olympics event. Um, Sugar, if you want to, actually I could find the, the link and post it in the chat as well for that, because it's right here. Uh, so yeah, so that's cool. I'm glad to see more events happening. Well, it's important to say that Sugar has the my full support and support of the QA team and the devs um, to do the things that she's doing. She's not just making shit up and doing it on her buddy helping her out. Um, she, she's asking a lot of questions and she's learning a lot. And I would expect nothing but bigger and better things from Sugar as she keeps learning how things happen. Um, so yeah, I pay attention to her events and I I try to attend all of them I can, that's for sure. Awesome. Uh, let's see. After that, that's really the end of my notes. We went through that super quickly. Um, yeah. But we do have that forum thread of people that made some suggested questions, so let me pull that back up. The first sure. one, though, that I remember, somebody asked me to ask you about rule number one. Rule number one. It's a staff rule. It applies to all staff at all times, no matter what they're doing or who they're talking about. It's about professionalism, and it's about doing the right thing. And rule number one is don't fuck with the players, either for or against, ever. Break rule number one, you're off my staff. It is over. <laughs> it's a good rule. Oh, uh, all right. Let me see. Um, all right. So Savak asked uh, to ask you about the harvester bug with resources missing from harvesters. If any progress or uh, theories. On, let's back up a second. Okay. Sorry. I'm about to introduce rule number two. 
<laughs> oh crap! Is this is this a uh, breaking news? Yeah. First ever. It, this is uh, looking forward to 1.0. Rule number two: Don't fuck with the players. That don't just mean staff anymore. All right? So if you're creating something in the game and you're just fucking with players to be fucking with players, you probably shouldn't be doing. Yeah. We got ways to see that now. We got logging on the server with our new servers and the amount of space and technology at our hands to be able to see who does what and when and how and... To be able to watch the game through metrics and unit testing that gives us constant feedback on gameplay while it's live. We have the ability to do backups every 24 hours and save them for months on end just to see the changes that happen between players in the game. We can pretty much see anything at any time and behavior of a player is going to be expected to not fuck with other players now that ain't got to say nothing about some pf pvp if i see zop anywhere and he's red i'm killing his punk ass and tea teabagging him right there that's not fucking with a player that's playing the game but fucking with players is something that is not cool. You've seen it in other games. Everybody's had to put up with it in one way or another and not willing to tolerate it. I'm just not. So what you're saying is that you're very much like the Eye of Sauron. I read a lot. <laughs> you can see all kinds of stuff. Yes. I can um, see admin logs. I know every admin command. And I can search the history of them all the way back to the beginning of any of them when they started. No, I won't Whether do that. it be Fast or Nova or Prime or the Pit, I can see every admin command that ever was placed on any of those servers at any moment. There you go. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, <Cheers>. What else? <laughs> um, all right. We already talked about the VPNs. We already talked about ADKs. Rule number one. All right. So this this resource harvester issue. Um, you have any idea what he's talking about? Resources what? going missing. Uh, some sort of harvester bug with resources missing from harvesters. Oh, that ancient bug where, yeah. And not always resources. It could be the finished product in the uh, output hopper, but they disappear. You hard log and log back in sometimes. Put somebody else on the admin and they can look at your harvester and there they are, but you can't see them. Hmm. That bug has been forever. God, somebody please help. No no what progress. No idea how, what's call, causing it. Should I call John Smedley? <laughs> <laughs> he might know, right? <laughs> Um, God. Yeah, but it, it, it's a valid bug, and it has been forever, and we all know it's a problem, but if we ever found it, uh, I figure we will. Um, we're getting into beta. We're going to clean all that shit up. So um, at this point, it's very been very ignoring, and it's been on bass since bass has had factories. So, uh, Loriana, who has actually on the forums QA semi-active as her title, um, yes. says, how can the community help QA uh, with and to prioritize Mantis tickets that are in feedback status? Um, we The QA team has recently went back in Mantis. Um, if you look at some of the tickets nowadays, they have uh, versions as a part of each ticket. Um, most all of them we haven't cleaned up all of them yet but they have versions assigned to them whether that be to a particular publish whether it needs more research um 
So we've changed the categories that are available in Mantis for our QA to sort and put things into separated buckets for clarity. So a good hard look at Mantis if you hadn't been on there in a while would definitely help uh, figure out how we're approaching those things and seeing what items need feedback and which of them are, you know, proving a negative uh, or, you know, the research just hasn't panned out to anything. And so it's still on feedback. Um, We've changed the way Mantis works to try to address those things. Okay. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing these names right. Arox or Arox asks um, if there's been any uh, work or discussion about the commonly incorrectly critical called critically successes when it comes to crafting with the ability to craft beyond normal stat caps. Is that something that you guys are considering? changing for 1.0 um that's a hard question um it's not something i could commit that we would or wouldn't change of course um but you know that we're looking at a lot of different things that can change uh you know the entire way the game is played out as far as you know buffs or crafting or resources um resource stats um you know, we've considered ideas of adding uh, the way resource stats. If you use an item that doesn't have the required stat that the schematic is asking for, you get a 100%. Uh, we thought about changing that to make the stats actually apply um, so that crafting with those items, you know, will matter. Um, let's say you're making a, a, a food additive from a BE product. All you got to do is add water, any water, don't fucking matter. Right? Yep. Make the water matter. So there so slight changes to the crafting system to give uh, meaning it's to certain all, things. All of, all, of, all of those things are possibilities, yes. Right. All right, again, things. second reminder, everything we're talking about post 1.0, subject to change. Subject to change, absolutely. Um, ideas, there's ideas, yes. There's a ton of ideas out there, and we've discussed a lot of them. What will actually happen? We might try some of that on bass in this beta phase while we're looking for it and see how you guys respond and see how it works and what you think. That may actually happen. Um, all right, so there's a lot of questions that I'm just going to blanket cover by asking, is there any chance the team will ever either be able to or attempt to make changes to the client to address certain client side bugs? For example, the friends list never saving notes, um, the food or drink fill bar not fitting correctly on the character sheet, or the data pad uh, not saving certain settings. Uh, no, I'm not sure about that still. I mean, at this point, we still have not done anything with other than very basic things that we did just to get you guys to be able to play through the client. And I don't see it really happening. Um, it's not something we've really stressed or worked on a lot lately. Um, you know, the whole idea of creating a new client and addressing those things is <laughs> God. a bit of fantasy and then a whole different project to be quite honest but you know it's an interesting one i mean i keep a close eye on what the guys over at mod the galaxy do and and uh you know I, a close what the, what the guys over at mod the galaxy do yeah but you said you kept you kept a close what a close eye on them i i i, I watch them as well okay so, you know. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, again, another question I get a whole bunch of asked. Uh, well, the ADK one we already answered. Um, and I think you, this is very, this is, I love the way this was subtly hinted at in the announcement. There's something in there, a line about how camping is going to be addressed. Um, the 24 7 Acklay Farm. Your thoughts. Uh, what about any of the 
cavern spawns that are desirable to the looters. Uh, what can we do to make it, you know, something that everybody gets a chance to play instead of those just sitting there waiting on it because it's going to be this location. What if we randomize the locations? What if we made triggers where you had to kill X amount of NPCs to be able to even get the trigger to set it off and then find the location? Yeah, mystery. there's a million ways to do it, and uh, yeah, as LK a keeps saying, ways. mystery. A million ways, and all are deviations from 14.1, but, you know, we're looking at 1.0. So, I mean, the ideas of being able to relieve some of that camping, uh, yeah, is a big deal for us. I think uh, we'll be doing something to look at that and uh, ways that might play out how it affects the community, how it affects gameplay. Absolutely. Now, I'm in no way obviously associated with the team, so my opinion is simply my opinion. I said That's it during it. the LK interview, and I'm just going to say it here to put it on record. Okay. <laughs> I think the two simplest solutions to the Acklay issue is either eject the party out of the dungeon, just similarly to how the DWB ejects the party, once you craft a jetpack or a piece of Mandalorian armor, which will force the party to have to go back through the dungeon, or just add one or two random world spawn accolades, similarly to how the Gorax works on Endor, so that there's at least another source of resources. That's right, just my opinion. All right, all right now, now I, will, I will point out your opinion mm -hmm. is limited to what you already know about the game. Yes, is exactly, exactly. Ah. So there's, uh, so uh, like I'm I said, for, I'm looking for creativity to get to that next level, to create yep. a different mystery. Got yep. not play the same old mystery we've gotten you. Uh, somebody asked, um, I missed who it was, uh, instancing. Oh, Pooch. Instinct. Is instancing an option, similarly to the Corvette? Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, there, it is, but... You know, it's, it should be said that those is those sort of things are not small projects. Those will be, those are large projects and take a lot of work um, and a lot of dev time to create those. Uh, so yeah, those sort of things are possible. I, I think the same thing can be said about a lot of the stuff that you guys work on. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, the community thinks a lot of the stuff that you guys do is easier than it actually is. They're like, oh, just just make this change, and that change is like a month's worth of work. Yeah, well, you know, our dev team is pretty fucking awesome. They make shit look easy. <laughs> We've been blessed with a great dev team, so. All right, what else? I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth between the questions that were submitted ahead of time and, and chat. Um, hey, are they talking about anything over there? Oh, there's there's all kinds I of stuff going on. Troll. You know how hard it is for me not to troll these fuckers. How Seriously. much? How all right? How about this? How much? Uh, are what's the best way to phrase this? Are there any NGE features that you would expect to see added post 1.0? For instance, new armor, new housing, new vehicles, multi passenger vehicles, um, stuff like that. Housing, new vehicles. I see that as a possibility. That's not really that big of a deal. Um, a multi passenger, we've worked on that a little bit, but haven't did it yet. So, that, you know, that's not in there. But I don't think we have any vehicles that are already multi passenger. Oh, just yeah. the just the X31 and X34 speeders, but it's the land speeders. Yeah, yeah. nobody's going to be riding them around anyway. Yeah, those would be the only multi-passenger vehicles. But we have tested around. Or the AV-21. AV-21 also. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Okay. Um, yeah, Nair here, uh, jetpack disabled, repairable. So about, like, vehicle restoration kits. I don't know. Mm, I guess that's going to that's gonna depend a lot about uh, on who the team is making the decisions. If they like that idea or not. I don't know. I got a jetpack. I got it disabled. I had to go get another jetpack. I played the game to get it. 
Uh, changing weapon power up and shield generator duration durability. This is all like system design balance changes and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to get into any specifics about any of that, but, you know, there's quite a few things that are possible to change. Um, we do want to make sure that we look at the long-term stability of the community playing the game. And that includes anything we can to make sure people can still come back and play five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. And that's important to me. Um, huge question that actually a brand new forum thread was started, I think yesterday or the day before. The people are still asking about, uh, it's hard to believe, the mission payouts being divided. Yeah, um, th that's a pretty good one. I mean, I know no 15.1 rules. Um, but then again, if we, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see something possibly, in just my opinion, because I don't have the final say on anything. Um, I'd like to see us remove that, but then uh, change the way payouts are done in a group a little bit um, so that you get your payout for yours, but if you have helpers, they get maybe something, um, you know, a way to get group dynamics back involved in the game um, to just cut and paste one way or the other either turn left or turn right. No, I like to think that there's some alternative somewhere in between that we can come up with that makes mission payouts and grouping for missions viable again, instead of just straight solo groups. Um, you know, I think, I think that would be far more engaging for a community as a whole. Okay. Um, I know Asifab is asking about the character limit. There's been a huge discussion about that. Um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think the general consensus is it's better to start with fewer with the potential of adding more later. It's yeah. a lot easier to go that way than it is to start with that, more. That is the anti-nerf version of yep. what we should do, absolutely. Um, it's easier to add than it is to take away. Takeaways are nerfs. Nobody wants a fucking nerf, so yeah, absolutely. Okay. We we will... We'll, try to avoid any nerfing whatsoever we'll start off pretty conservative and as, as things go we'll pick it up a little bit as things play out uh kinnard is asking and i have also seen this uh any ways on combating the sale of credits for real money on third-party sites i believe that's something that got something to do with some of the tools that you guys have been working on to monitor yeah. that kind of stuff absolutely Absolutely. We have tools in game uh, that we can use to see where your credits came from, who you got them from, what item you traded it for, which vendor it was on. Um, uh, if whatever we sort of choose to focus in on and look at, we can. I mean, there's not a whole lot that we don't see and can't see, and that's you know why we're making a whole lot of these changes. I mean, you guys looking at the code on Bass, and you don't see a whole lot of changes, even on Unstable. But, you know, we're busy every day, and we're creating a new environment to host this game. Out. And, yeah, things are going to change. All right. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just reading some of these comments. The Sauron theme ain't no joke. <laughs> um... I mean, while I'm looking for more questions, is there anything else that you'd like to, to just let anyone, everyone know? May the force be with you for all time. Oh, Juz actually asks a good question. Just chilling. Um, if curious if we could ditch the dragging mobs rule since the leash length was corrected already. Currently, the rule there's a rule in place, I believe, where you're not dragging a mob onto a group of like afkers is punishable but that exists from a time where people were able to drag crates from the graveyard all the way down to moss isley 
since that's no longer possible. And that's that... a question for support, and we'll let them think about that. And if they have a question, they'll pose it to the leaders when they let them decide. There you go. Uh, yeah, the rules, they are what they are. I mean, not going to consider even talking about any changes to the rules without it going through the entire support system and our entire staff. Nobody talks about the rules or makes any changes to the rules ever on their own. This is always done in unison, unanimously between the entire staff or it's not done. I see a lot of the questions are all are a lot of them about system balancing, um, like making faction armor good, making right, the lightsaber so, uh, more. Let me let me answer all of those in one fell swoop. Okay. What you want me to give you the answer now, so you don't got to fucking deal with the mystery? Is that what you're asking me? You don't want no mystery in your game. You want the answers now. Is that how it goes? No thanks. Play the game. I like it. Yeah. Um. Ah, Red Huts. I like that multicolored bounty hunter armor. Can we have that back? <laughs> can, can we have that back? <laughs> multicolored. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know why that was taken out. That that was very disappointing. That's a good one. That's a good one. And it is a stupid change. That you know it was fourteen point one. All I mean, right. Just Customization of in-game play. I mean, there's a whole lot of we can do to open yeah, some of that. Yeah, might maybe armor color customization kits let you recolor existing armor, or even you know, like the way you do a composite, make yeah. a consumable item that lets you recolor any armor. Why not? Why not? Um, yeah, make it, this make it something you have to take your armor or your clothing back to. Yeah, make it a skill. Smith or Taylor that made it and pay them to get it changed to a specific color. Yep. I like it. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, it's been an hour 15. Do you guys have any more questions before we wrap things up? That went way quicker than the LK interview, but I think because of the whole JTL announcement back then there was a little bit more to talk about did you want to touch at all at jtl uh jtl um you know we've got a basic framework we've got to get together the architect you know we're really going to need some devs uh you know to do some lua start punching in some data to fill it out um so we do have an active jtl interest channel on uh, Discord, you can see text Lord Cater um, and ask him for an invite to that channel to talk about some of the discussion we have about it, what's going on there. Um, but, uh, you know, right now, first things first, 1.0 out. Um, we're entering beta phase, hit 1.0, um, get stabilized, and then, you know, it's all hands on deck for JTL at that point. Um, so yeah, uh, it's not too soon to start thinking about it. That's for dang sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lorian also just threw in one more question. Can you speak at this early stage about the long-term financial cost once 1.0 is launched and Basilisk is decommed? Will it remain about what it is now or other funding sources, uh, other than player donations being considered? Um, we have talked a little bit about using something just slightly beyond it uh, we're talking uh patreon and being able to use that to donate um being able to do some advertising for ourselves to garner donations um the idea of actually selling gear or uh anything is possible uh, depends on how we approach it. I mean, we can't overstep our bounds with the mouse, of course. Um, so, you know, we need to be able to, if we ever do market any products like a cup or a t-shirt, um, that we do it properly and then, you know, nobody makes any profit off of it. Even a microtransaction is considered a no-no, so... 
Yeah, I would be I would be careful walking or uh, talking about selling in-game items for money. Um, just the thought of you know getting advantages over other players, making a uh, making SCBG EMU. Yeah, see there it goes. Did I hear pay to win? No, you yeah, didn't. no. It would have to be strictly cosmetic. You could, yeah, you could buy a coffee mug because you want to buy. The profit goes to support the fucking organization, and that's it. That's all you get. You get a coffee mug for your money. <laughs> you can say, I got a coffee mug. <laughs> All right, then I only have one final question before we uh, wrap everything up. And that is, what is the release date for 1.0? Uh, that would be Sun Crusher 2009. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much exactly uh, what I which, expected. Speaking of which, uh, ETAs are never spoken of. Soon um, is always the answer. Um, and here's a, something to leave you all thinking about. It won't be called Sun Crusher. Oh, is that official? I know that was discussed. Um, we're actually talking about having a community event where the we take a suggestion of some names. Um, I've actually asked Sugar to look at how to set that up and evaluate that, that we take in community input on what the name of Sun Crusher will be. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, I can come up with a couple ideas myself, but we'll keep those, in, we'll keep those to myself for now. Um, yeah, she's coming up with a set of rules whereby you can submit a name because we're not going to listen to any, you know, potato chip and get voted in, and we're called potato chip, and that's the way it is. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. would I would play on a server called potato no. chip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, do you play SWG? Oh yeah, what server are you? I'm on potato chip. <laughs> Bud Light. That better be the server name now. <laughs> Bud Light. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on Bud Light, man. Chicken McNuggies. Yeah. Chalky milk. All right. All right. Well, that's it. Um, thank you very much for taking you know, an hour and a half out of your Saturday to come talk to everybody. Um, potato chip powered by hamsters. Exactly. There you go. Uh, yeah. Anything you want to It's been my pleasure, Mobius. Is I've quite enjoyed myself today. Uh, this you. is this is awesome. Um, yeah, it's, I love being able to make staff members see more personable, more relatable. We're all people. Uh, people don't always get treated like people on the internet. So hopefully now you get a... People. Yeah, <laughs> hate everybody equally. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again. Um, we're definitely going to be doing more of these in the future. I would love to have an interview with Ferelli at some point and uh, Sugar, now that she's event coordinator, probably do one with her as well. Uh, as long as everybody is looking or is uh, willing to. But um, we'll set those up as we go. Yeah. I mean, as you know, we're, we don't, none of us do these alone. I mean, I was involved with Lord Cater as well as he was involved with mine, as well as our entire staff were involved at some point with, uh, you know, ideas and suggestions on how to approach this and that. Uh, none of us do anything by ourselves. This is a group effort. Make no mistake. I'm proud of this group. They've done some amazing things. You guys in chat are hilarious. Make Raf Coster next. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and we'll have uh, we'll have um, Smedley after him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, though. Thank you all for coming by. Uh, thank you again, Scurvy. Look forward to seeing what other announcements you guys have coming up next. That's going to be it for now. I, I'm really bad at saying goodbye. So goodbye, everybody. We'll see you All next right. time. Thanks. See you.